This book is a story of BC's solidarity uprising told through the lives of people who lived it. There are the little indignities in everyday life that people endure silently on their own. There are also moments, however, when solitude suddenly gives way to solidarity. In 1968, student protests in France led to repression and riots and more protests with unions joining in until for two months the country was in the throes of a general strike. Occupied factories under worker self-management, universities run by occupation committees, and the National Theatre transformed into a decision-making assembly. Even the seemingly least political joined in the strikes and occupations. France's National Football League hung a banner from its headquarters proclaiming, football belongs to the people. It was mind-boggling, actually, Aaron Barsman, a veteran of the uprising, told me. Time had stopped. The whole country was on strike. The heady events in France were part of an international rising that occurred during the late 1960s and early 70s. Similar exhilaration ensued at Tiananmen Square, 1989, Spain, 1936 to 1938, all of Europe, 1848, Occupy Wall Street and Cairo, 2011, and the anti-racism protests of 2020. These euphoric moments arrived suddenly, but they're expressions of long-simmering, widely-held feelings. They express the repressed potential for an entirely different set of social relations than we're accustomed to. BC is not on the world's radar like Paris or New York, but still, solidarity was our moment. Quote, so many people coming together from all different stripes for all the different reasons that they had, all coming together and working together with one objective, says solidarity activist Diane Wood. You don't get that opportunity very often in your life, so for me, you use the word euphoric, it was. 